Hey, this is Ogre from Skinny Puppy and Ogre, and you are getting hard to www.foreskinradio.com. Ouch. I think it was. Yeah, it probably was last year. The, yeah, I guess it was last year. Yeah, so we're working on the third record now uh, for SPV and we'll see where that goes. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> what's it? Uh, is there anything different about it? And you know, honestly, I've been, I've been working on this um, and just getting this tour together for the last year, and so... Um, you know, I've kind of, uh, uh, I haven't even heard some of the bed tracks that have been worked on, to be honest with you, so I, I can't comment on that yet. I'm sorry. Mm, that's okay, it's all good. I just gotta make sure this shit's running up. <laughs> like, fuck, hope it didn't, like, <laughs> turn off halfway. Cool. Okay, so uh, what's the future for Skinny Puppy look like for you, and for you as a solo artist as well? Well, I mean, I can't predict those things. I think, for me, it's all about trying to enjoy and, and be in the moment and kind of... Uh, you know, enjoy this for what it is and really try and work this and uh, actually concentrate on working this as opposed to this kind of like moving ahead to the next thing or thinking about what the next thing would be. So I think for right now it's, uh, you know, they're planning on servicing uh, one of the singles to radio and we're doing this tour as a building block to see if we can get to Europe and so it's all kind of like, you know, one step at a time and, uh, and I'm fine with that. You know, I'm fine with kind of like taking each one of these shows and really you know, focusing in on what it's going to be, mistakes or otherwise, and just kind of enjoying all of it for what it is, as opposed to just kind of like, you know, constantly thinking about the next thing's going to be better or, or whatever. I think there's a, there's there's a lot to be said about about staying in the moment and just kind of being cool with that and enjoying it. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do now in my life in a lot of ways. You know, I got I got way too uptight when I kept thinking about the future and the past and. You know, the future hasn't come yet and the past is already over, so it's like it's the only thing that's really here is right now and here and so it's all kind of that timing thing for me in a lot of ways. You know, I have I have a real problem with time in a lot of ways. I think time is kind of a non existent concept. So I think that that Harry Potter idea of like, <laughs> like, like You read it? Oh, no, it's just that idea, you know, there's there's that thing where he's being He's being like, uh, he's on the side of that river and he sees that light on the other side and it's a stag and he's being sucked by one of those, uh, whatever those creatures are that come down and like steal your soul. He sees a light on the other side of the lake and doesn't know I where it is. I have seen a lot of them. Anyway, the idea, the idea psychologically mm-hmm. is that, you know, you are the person in time that comes and saves yourself in a lot of ways. Whatever you're going through, there's, there's, there's another part of you that's in a different time, time space that, that, uh, that actually is kind of watching over you in a lot of ways. And I kind of believe that, you know, in a lot of ways. I think there's a cyclical side to that. I hear you There's too many things in my life where uh, there's things that have intervened that I could see as being, you know, somewhat esoteric or even, you know, downright, you know, you know, parapsychological in a lot of ways, you know, and and uh, and yet I think in a lot of ways it's, it's it's a time thing with your own with your own mind and your own your own being in a lot of ways. So I think that that in a lot of ways we've already learned the lessons that we're making mistakes from, and it just comes a time to actually listen to that voice in your head, which is you, you know, and so. That's kind of akin to quantum physics, almost. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I don't know what that is. What is yeah, well, I mean, quantum physics is is. Uh, I don't have that great of an understanding of it to, to like to like spout on about it, to be honest with you. And I think that for me, all of this stuff is very intuitive, and it's kind of like if you sat me down and had me, you know, write some dissertation about it, I'd fail miserably. But there's things that I feel, and there's things that I experience, and 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 they're mine to experience and feel and. And uh, I wish I was more uh, in, in touch with the theory about these things, but I think even those theories will eventually break down. I think it's far greater and far beyond all of us, and far far beyond the um, the simple math or the simple computational theory that we have right now. I think it's it's something that goes beyond all of that in a lot of ways. It's a mystery, I and mean, it should be a mystery. Yeah, I noticed that, like you, Santana, Sarah McLaughlin. Well, I noticed you tonight do the Namaste thing before you leave the stage. Wow, what does that mean to you? Well, it's just, it's just kind of a, it, it, it's a wish, it's a wish for everybody. I'm always saying to everybody that, you know, be well and be good. And, and so I think it's, it's just that, it's that outpouring of both thanks and, and just, you know, giving of, of like a good spirit to somebody else. And it comes from, you know, whether it's, it's up above or from you, it's like, you know, it's really all I have to offer. <laughs> at the end of the day is you have plenty to offer I'll be honest <laughs> oh, no, with you no but I'm saying within, within the sense of like you know what I like to do with these shows is really trying to you know trying to connect there's there's, a, there's the idea of getting together in a space with a bunch of people and connecting on something which is a, a tribal concept it goes back to the prehistoric times and people okay. saying I like beating drums but there's something about that that rhythm that syncopation and I mean I feel it so when there's a connection with people I mean I, I appreciate it Mm-hmm. It's a wonderful feeling. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a gift in itself that people take for granted that are in the music business is when you connect with an audience or if you have the ability to, to work an audience, not manipulate, but if you have an audience, you know, if you have the ability to kind of bring an audience to a, to a state of whatever it is, frenzy, um, you know, kind of a psychedelic high, you know, kind of a, 
whatever it is, if, if they're if they're if they're emoting or if they're if they're being um, introspective, whatever it is, we can do that. If you can bring an emotion in people, it's it's an incredible thing. And and when they respond to it, it's a gift to me. You know, it's like you know, there's times I've been on stage where I haven't connected and I know the feeling. You know, it's <laughs> it's, it's a horrible feeling. But when you do actually connect, it's it's uh, that's what I'm talking about. That's that's the the equation that I that I can't explain. You know, because you're dealing with like you know lights, high volume, and and yet there's still people and people on and. and uh, there's a higher level of connection going on that I still find it's a mystery sometimes to me. And then there's also the idea of just the, the sounds and the tones and everything. When it comes together on stage, sometimes you get those moments where it just it's like an orchestra when you go and see an orchestra. Mm -hmm. and, and when they're playing all well together, it actually elevates, you know, it, it, it transcends everything. And, and uh, you know, I mean, that's an experience that I, and I feel lucky to, to have been able to experience so many times on stages is having that, that connection with the audience and having that, that give and take and, and uh, I, I love that you know I mean that's that makes me feel like I'm useful a and, and it's also something that that taps into that esoteric side of everything that I that I want to explore and be a part of and so the namaste is, is a thanks I guess ultimately you know it's just it's just a, it's, a, it's a way of me saying thank you to, 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 to the audience to the people that come out and see the show did a lot of your awareness about the communication between the audience and you the artist uh, come through experience because I noticed that like um, it seemed like Susie and even Peter, uh, Susie from the uh, Susie and the Banshees and Peter Murphy from Bauhaus, for our listeners, uh, they were able to do that too. Like uh, they really, it felt like they were really interacting with the audience. Well, and and your question is, is did that did that come through uh, through experience yeah, with you over the ages? Yeah, I mean it comes through. Yeah, I mean the first time I went on stage, I was like a deer in the headlights. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's a it's it's a unique thing when you start being able to. To work an audience in that way, like play to different sides, or like you know, read big. Even like theater is all about reading big. Doing film is 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 all about you know, close, tight, mm. you know, s small reactions and things like that. So Back when you were new romantic, what's that? What I was in, when I was new romantic, <laughs> or you were classified as such? Uh, yeah, well, well I mean, day. skinny puppy was, or I was. I was actually a, a more of a new romantic back when I was in Calgary. Oh yeah. When I was working in a record store and listening to things like Visage and. Uh, uh, with all the other the new romantic bands, Visage is one, and uh, Spando Ballet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was working at a record store, so that kind of turned me around. And then uh, you know, I was I was wearing all the the shit, doing the high, <laughs> like, makeup and leg warmers, even all this shit. And, and, and mom would help me put makeup on, and and, uh, and then I kind of um, when I moved to Vancouver, and even before mm. that, I, I I listened to Joy Division, and that really was mm. uh, you know that and kind of. Those early Cure records were kind of things that really kind of changed me into a different, you know, it was a kind of emo before emo and the shoegazer before the shoegazer. <laughs> cool. was, and you know, bands like the Cars even, which were kind of they're they're, they're kind of the the archetypal shoegazer band in a lot of ways. So, I was going to ask you, it's a bit of a touchy subject. Um, you don't have to answer if you don't want. Um, how does it feel since um, uh, the uh, passing of uh, Kevin? Oh, Dwayne. Sorry? Of Dwayne? Was it Dwayne? It was Dwayne that I died. I thought it was yeah. Kevin. Oh my God. No. I'm sorry. No, I'm I mean, misinformed. No, Slap no, myself no. in the face. No, oh. no, no. No, it's cool. It's, it's like, uh, actually when that happened, uh, everybody thought it was me. Mm -hmm. So it was Ogre that that, uh, that had overdosed. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I still think about that. And there's so many people, even today, talking to some people, we talked about Dwayne and, and about, you know, I totally miss him. I mean, he was a very talented and very sensitive person. and, and uh, you know where he would be now with his programming is mm. just is I mean you can't even think about it obviously because that's looking into the future again that doesn't exist for this person but, but yeah he was, he was he was you know sorely missed and I think in a lot of ways the demise of Skinny Puppy was based around the death of Dwayne in a lot of ways just when he left it was like the the spirit of it was gone and we've we've regrouped and we found somebody in Justin Justin our drummer mm -hmm. who uh, is, he shares the same spirit as Dwayne in a lot of ways the same the same mindset so. You know, we're lucky to have found somebody with that same kind of vibe. I think in a lot of ways. So, you guys have a really distinct new flavor, though. I noticed with uh, go how do you pronounce it, Ganesha or Ganesha? Ganja. 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 Yeah. The way that song just like rips up is like a dance floor ripper. It, like rips a new asshole in you. It's yeah. just a fucking. It's like a party start. You like just gets a party started. Like that grooves. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, I mean that that's song the thing. Is I think, I think that has a lot to do with uh, with Mark and, and mm -hmm. his influence. I mean, he brought. A little bit of groove to something that was a bit more um, static and a bit more, um, you know, staccato, which mm -hmm. is what a lot of industrial music was back in the '80s. And, uh, mm -hmm. and we started moving into different realms of like, you know, I mean, we've always been a band that's kind of taken 
different directions with every record mm -hmm. and much to our you know success and to our detriment in a lot of ways because I think people sometimes expect or want you to create the same record over and over again we've mm -hmm. never done that so yeah. but that's just yeah that's half the fun <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to take a, a lot more of your time. I think that's about it, cool. actually. Thank you. But thank you so much, Mr. Ogre. That was awesome. Pleasure meeting you. Pleasure meeting you, too. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank sure. you.